Remember back in 2012 when smartphones were much smaller? The iPhone sported a 3.5 inch screen, the Galaxy S had a 4 inch display, and the Nexus One had a 3.7 inch screen. The point is phone screens were small, but today, 10 years later, most of our phones feature 5 to 6 inch screens, except for this one, the Palm smartphone. So I'm sure many of you guys remember Palm. Back in the early 90s and 2000s, they were a pocket computer company. They made staples such as the Palm Pilot and later the Handspring Visor. They also made a few smartphones such as the Palm Treo, Pro, and Pixie. But now they've made something different. Their latest smartphone just called the Palm or Palm Palm serves to offer a different purpose than the everyday smartphone. This phone is not meant to be a phone replacement, rather a companion device. The idea is that you keep your phone and the same number, but can leave your main device at home for a day. However, the question is, can the phone that fits in your palm actually replace your phone for a day? Let's find out. All right, so what actually really surprised me about the Palm was the premium build quality. Apple similarities aside, the phone looks pretty amazing. It's got a nice glass back, an aluminum enclosure, and it has some pretty decent haptic feedback. Honestly, if I wasn't paying attention, I would say this was a small iPhone, not only because of the look, but because of how premium it feels. Now, moving on from that, the elephant in the room is the size. The display is a 3.3 inch 720p LCD, and this is even smaller than the original iPhone. It's so small in fact that Palm makes a case that comes with a lanyard so you could theoretically clip this to your keys. Coming in at a whopping 2x3 inches, the Palm can literally fit in your palm. In theory this would make using the device hard, but it's actually not that bad. Sure typing on it is not great, but with a swipe you can text pretty fast. The 720p display looks sharp because the screen is so small, and everyday tasks are definitely doable. Now the idea of having such a small phone is to create an experience that gets you off of your phone in general. This idea is really big in the minimalist community and having a phone that does your basic tasks without sucking you in is actually really appealing. But unfortunately this is a difficult feat to actually accomplish and while so far Palm has done a great job of this, there are a few areas that need to be worked on and the biggest one unfortunately is battery life. Now, shipping with 800 milliamps, the battery life is nothing to write home about. In fact, it's actually kind of bad. Now, yes, the premise of this device is to get you off of your phone. However, with the terrible battery life at idle, you might as well just stick with your Pixel or OnePlus and not look at your phone as much. While the life mode on the Palms extends the battery life significantly on idle, the phone will almost always die if not on this mode overnight and not plugged in. It does charge pretty quickly, however, and takes roughly 50 minutes to fully charge. Now, having to constantly charge the device kind of defeats the purpose of it being a replacement device for even a day or a companion device. So this is an area that needs much improvement. Now, were the battery life not as bad, the Palm actually offers a pretty decently enjoyable experience. Where this is mainly seen is in the operating system and the camera. Let's talk about the camera first. Now right off the bat we get a rear facing 12 megapixel shooter and an 8 megapixel front facing one. And to be honest they're not too bad. Now sure they're not going to be up to pixel or iPhone quality, however in a pinch they do pretty well. With the right conditions photos are decently sharp and have some dynamic range. Low light photos are obviously not as good but still get the job done. The selfie camera is about the same giving you decent results but nothing amazing. The point is the camera is definitely capable and if you're just trying to capture a memory or document something, then the Palm will do just fine. Now most of you would probably expect the Palm to run some sort of webOS or watered down Android, but that's not the case. It's running a fully fledged version of Android. It features a custom launcher that looks similar to the Apple Watch's honeycomb layout. All of your apps are in the same place and you just have to scroll down to find the right one. Now you can download anything from the Google Play Store and even other launchers such as Nova or an iPhone launcher, however with this it becomes really hard to see, so I would just recommend sticking with the default launcher. With full Android performances, okay. I didn't notice any major hiccups and while you can definitely feel the device limitations, it performs decently. It ships with Qualcomm Snapdragon 435 processor, an Adreno 505 GPU, and 3 gigs of RAM, and it clocks in at 1.4 gigahertz, so it's not going to blow your mind or anything, but with a device meant to only be used occasionally, it gets the job done just fine. So that brings us to the price, and here is where it gets a little confusing. 
At first, the Palm was marketed as a phone companion and was only offered on Verizon. The idea was that you would use Verizon's number share to use both phones with the same number. But now they also offer an unlocked version, which is the one I have. This means that instead of a companion device, it's more of a small replacement. And this is what brings us to the confusion. At launch, the Palm was priced at $350, and while it still is on their website, on Amazon, you can grab one for around $90. At $350, this is way too steep. At that price, you could easily get a Pixel 3a, which would give you a far, far better experience. But at 90, the appeal is much stronger. While you would probably wouldn't be able to use the phone as a complete replacement, if you're really looking for that minimalistic lifestyle, then the $90 might be worth it for you. All in all, I'm excited to see how Palm iterates with their next device. I think the minimalist appeal is definitely there, but practically needs some work. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you liked this video, you know what to do. If you didn't, well, too bad. Anything else you'd like me to know, make sure to drop it in the comments below. This is Luke with Techno Minute, and until next time, peace.